Hi everyone, it's me, Nina. Um, I wanted to come on and do a video that I'm going to title GVHD. That's my dog hacking. Sorry about that if you hear her. Um, GVHD, which is graft versus host disease. It is found in um, transplant patients of different types of transplants. My husband had a liver transplant in 2013 and he um, contracted GVHD just, I think it was a, within a month of his transplant. So this video is going to be about his journey and sort of my journey through that as well. I'll try to keep this as short as I can. Um, first off, April the 13th, 2013, no women, April the 11th, 2013, my husband was blessed with a new liver. Um, we don't know anything about the, um, the one that donated the liver other than that it was a male and um, must have been in some type of an accident because he was airlifted to the hospital and that's all that we know. He has written the family and we haven't heard anything so we are just taking their quiet as um, they want their privacy and we respect that. We would love to have known the family. Uh, at, at the beginning of this journey in 2011, our thoughts on transplant were, um, oh, I don't want someone to die for me. Well, no, that person's going to pass anyway. And if they have chosen to save your life through donation, it's a gift. It is the gift of life. So um, going through that, our whole attitude has changed. When I had prayed, I had prayed for God to send someone that was not going to die for my husband. But through his death, my husband could have life. And that's exactly what happened. And I'm still so thankful for that. So let me continue on with this story. This is just going to be part one. Because if you want to go watch the other series that I just made, they are entitled um, Alpha-1 Antitrypsin Deficiency Cirrhosis Liver. And there are four parts to that. And you're more than welcome to go check those out. If you haven't, would you mind subscribing and, and clicking the like button? I just, I'm brand new at all this, and I heard that it helps, so if you wouldn't mind doing that, I'd appreciate it. All right, let's get started. My husband was home from the hospital after his transplant and had been home for probably a week or so and started getting fevers, just small fevers. They never amounted to very much, and the highest one went up to like 101. Well, I contacted um, the large hospital, his transplant hospital, and they told me to just keep an eye on him. He was allowed to take Tylenol, and if it didn't help, to get him to the hospital. So that's what ended up happening. He ended up kept spiking those fevers, and I couldn't get him to stay down. So took him to our um, little hospital here in town, and they hooked an IV up, and because of him being so fresh, I guess, you know, I said it was a week, but it could have been close to two. I guess it doesn't matter um, in the long scheme of things. So anyway, our hospital didn't feel comfortable treating him because they had um, seen that he was a liver recipient and it was, uh, you know, a fresh liver. And they wanted to make sure that he was given the best care. So they ended up sending him to the large hospital, which is about an hour and a half away from us um, via an ambulance. So he, he gets to the hospital, and then I drive up later, and um, found out that he had the disease called GVHD, which is graft, ho graft versus host disease. I had no idea what that was. And, you know, during the liver transplant time, I had researched and researched probably everything I could get my hands on, but never ever came across that, that type of disease. Um, I'm filming this in the basement and it's not finished yet, so you'll see corners without trim and all ceilings. But just look over that for me. And I have a very fussy dog, so um, I, I'm going to do my best to make this good for you guys. Okay, so anyway, we found out that he had that disease. And like I said, I had no idea what that entailed. I had no idea. Well, his, he started getting more of a fever and kept a fever. And then he started getting a rash all over his body and it it was just it was not like a uh, you know like a bump here and a bump here it it covered him 
and it was really really itchy and he was in he was in misery misery and um, it had a lot of other probably different symptoms but those were the two that that really really you know stood out to me um, it also affected uh, his I guess his heart and everything and I didn't know any of that at the time well I had been working I was working full-time and I had taken off a lot of time because I had been spending the time at the guest house and in the hospital, you know, during my husband's sickness and while he had his um, liver transplant. So I felt, you know, my work had told me they had done all they could do and they were so sweet to me and so good to me, but I had to get back to work. And so I, I, I just assumed it was going to be, you know, just a little disease thing that they would be able to cure within a few days and, you know, then I would bring him home. And, um, so I explained it to him that I had to go back to work or, you know, I, I could not lose my job at that time because that was the only insurance that we had. And my husband's job had closed down during all of the wait for his transplant. So I had to keep my job and my insurance was very good. And his, um, his transplant costed over $500,000 and just about everything was covered. So, you know, I knew a good thing when I had it and I could not lose my job. So I went back to work and then I went up just every few days and of course stayed with him in the evenings. And it, you know, it was a long drive, an hour and a half away from me. And I didn't get off work till five o'clock. So that was a long drive uh, for a tired lady, you know. And plus I, at work, I worried about him constantly. So my, my poor brain was, you know, I was just worried all the time. I got an itch on my arm. Um, so I get up there and I visited him the last time I was up there and he was 49 and it was just, um, excuse me, my fans blowing and hairs bugging me. He was um, 49 then, almost ready to turn 50. And I went home and I told my son and his family, I said, you know, let's plan a little party for dad because, you know, he's been, he just went through so very much in getting a transplant and now he's really, really sick, you know. And at that time, they hadn't told me a lot about what was going on. And like I said, I was working full time, over hours even. And um, I didn't really have time to research any of this. And it was probably a blessing in disguise that I didn't. So it was almost uh, 5 o'clock at work. It was almost time for me to leave. And I got a, a phone call on my cell phone. And it was the head nurse at the hospital that my husband was at. And I thought, how strange, they had never called me ever, other than the day that he got his transplant. So, um, you know, I, I talked to her and she, she told me, um, asked me if I was coming up later. And I said, I am. I said, does he need something? And she said, well, ma'am, she said, just to let you know, he is, um, he is really sick. And she said, his chances of, uh, surviving are not very good. And I'm telling you, um, I freaked out freaked out and my boss was going down the hallway I was the only one left in the room the shipping room and um, my boss came in and is you know wide-eyed and he's wondering what's going on and I get off the phone and I am bawling and um, I said I have to leave right now and he said no you've got to someone's got to go with you and I wouldn't hear of it and I got in the car and I drove at the hour and a half and honestly it's not a good thing because I don't remember getting there and that's scary and it's a really busy city up there so I get up there and I find out um, that my husband's chances of surviving are actually only 1.5 percent and I know percentages don't mean anything but if someone comes in and tells you that's the percentage that your loved one has to make it, um, even though I feel like I have had a lot of, um, I had hope all through this journey, I think that I actually lost a little bit of faith. And I prayed, and my son told me, he goes, Mom, do you honestly believe that God is going to take Dad through everything that he went through and then take his life from this. And I said, honey, I don't know. Because I don't know God's plans. You know, his plans are, are not our plans. They're, they're different. So I don't know what his plans are. And it was awful. I, I don't know what else to say. It was terrible. Well, the, the doctor team came in again. 
and they explained the whole illness to me. And what it was is it wasn't my husband rejecting the liver. It was actually the liver was so healthy and so good that it was rejecting my husband's body because my husband's body was so weak and so sick from where he had been sick for so long that it was rejecting him. And I thought I had never heard of that and nothing like that in my life. And um, so I said, you know, what do we do? What's the next step, you know? And they explained it to me that there is no, there's no cure. There's no real medicine that, that will fully affect it. They had treated someone within the last, I don't remember how many years they had said, that had a liver transplant and the same thing happened to them. They had treated them with this medication that is no longer um, being made. It is no longer available. And when they had heard about that medicine no longer being available or being uh, made, they kept a supply of it in their storehouse. So just in case they had any more patients that would contract that disease. And all I can say is thank God they did. They had the mind to look forward. And um, so they hooked my husband up and I have no idea what the medicine was, but we did have to, I had to sign and Steve had to sign paperwork stating that yes, they could use, and it was just all trial based stuff. And I said, absolutely, whatever you have to do, if it's worked before, it's gonna work again. I prayed. So um, we signed the paperwork. They got him hooked up on it. And like I said, I have no idea what it was. He was on a lot of different medicines at that time. He was on the all of the anti-rejection pills. And they had to start weaning him off of those and weaning him off of those. Because then they were afraid that the anti-rejection pills were going to make him reject the liver. So took him off of the, all of the medication. Kept him on the medications that hopefully would would stop the GVHD and that included some type of a chemo and I I, do, I don't know I never did know I asked questions I looked at things but you know honestly at that time after going through what we had went through and what my husband had went through I just wanted him better I wanted him home and I didn't care what they used as long as it was going to get him better so he went like that he was ill severely ill for just about a month he lost over 80 pounds in one month, which left him nothing but skin and bones. I mean, he looked, he honestly looked worse than what he did before he got his liver, and he looked pretty bad then. Everyone thought that he would never make it, and he did. So um, he, he got better. Um, he stopped losing. The rash started going away, and he got, he got well. And you know what? That was back in 2013. Now, today, it is 2018. And he, praise God, and he just went for his five-year liver transplant birthday, rebirth, whatever you want to call it. We call it um, liverversary. And um, he just went for that. It's probably been a month ago now, I believe. And the doctors are excited about his, his um, health. And how well he has done. And now he did get a, uh, an incisional hernia and had to go back in. Um, that was in September of 2016 and got that surgery done. And they cut him from his sternum all the way down to his pubic bone for that. So he's actually got this big old X on his belly. And um, I'm proud to death of it. I tried to get him to go without a shirt when we go swimming, but he won't because I am proud of those scars. Um, but he's doing so well. And the thing I wanted to tell you about, once you survive this, you never get it again. So that is a worry that I don't have to worry about. And once he had his transplant, he never will get back the alpha one either um, because that was genetic. So once you got a new liver, it was gone. It's done gone, it will not come back. So what I wanted to share with you is, is because of this GVHD, when he went back for his five years celebration um, last month, 2018, they told him that they are going to start gradually reducing his amount of pills that he takes that are anti-rejection medicines that have a lot of bad side effects and they can even cause cancer and all that. 
And the only reason that, that he's having it done so soon, and plus, you know, after he got that disease and got over it, they he was already on like half the medication that a normal patient would have to be on. So now he should be done with one of those medications probably within the next year. They'll have him totally weaned off of that. And, you know, Lord's will, he'll be able to slowly get off the next one. So because of that, God made a way for him to be even healthier and better. So my my story here is don't always think that when things seem down and that you're not going to make it or life isn't fair or any of those things, don't, don't let it keep you down. Because sometimes those things that brought you down are actually there for your good. You can look back like me and have a smile on your face and say, yep. Nina was telling the truth. Not all things that look bad end up bad. So you just go through whatever trial, whatever journey, whatever your life may be leading you to right now. And you hold on no matter what it takes to every little bit of faith, every little bit of joy. And you face it together with your loved ones. And I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing how it all worked out. So I just praise God, and I'm glad that you guys all were here for me, and let me share that with you. And if you know anyone that has suffered with any of that, they can contact me, um, and I'll be glad to help them and talk to them and, and let them know uh, more general, more um, detailed things. If I can help them, I will. That's what I'd like to do in this world is be a help to someone else. So God bless you all. Thanks again for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.